Okay, boys, I uh, I want to talk about competitive. I do apologize for not getting this together before now. I've had Luna's Howl for probably like two, three weeks. I haven't even started grinding yet for Not Forgotten. But in the back of my head has been a number of things that I would have done differently on the road to Luna's Howl. Now, for those of you that don't know what Luna's Howl is, it is the competitive reward weapon for reaching the rank fabled, as well as doing a number of these quest steps. For me, it was harder finishing these quest steps than it was to reach the rank. Now, with that being said, guys, competitive, as bad as it may seem to you now, is so much better than what it was last season. So for my guys that just played last season, and in your head you're like, hell no, I'm never stepping in there again. Understand, boys, it's so much better. If it was as bad as it was last season, I would have just said the hell with the playlist and never gone back. Bringing Radar back, having the new sandbox that we have, competitive is a lot better. Okay, so tip number one. This is the best tip out of everything that I'm about to give you. Maybe not the best. I'll probably think of something better. But get the hand cannon trust. Now, I know some people are like, why? Why trust over something like Ace of Spades? And I've seen people use West of Sunfall as well as Crimson. Not saying those hand cannons aren't good. But boys, a decently rolled trust is so good for all of these quest steps. For precision kills, for solo kills. And at some point, especially when you start to get into the higher ranks, you're going to begin to find yourself in 1v1s against people you using Luna's Howl. Truss is a phenomenal hand cannon to battle that. Now I'm not saying Truss is better than Luna, obviously we're, we're going for Luna's Howl for a good reason, but there's a lot of times I outgun Luna's Howl with a good roll Truss. I got a pretty decent roll here, I mean it's not great, so again, like I said, just get a decent roll. And again, you could do that by just hitting the gamut playlist. And as time consuming as that may seem to be, it'll make up for it by completing these quest steps and getting your rank up much faster. Okay guys, the second tip, I would definitely say you need to be playing the objective as hard as you can. Pay attention to the little details and start developing an understanding for the objective at hand. If you take something like control, control is, is super simple. Pick the two zones that are the easiest to defend together. Sometimes it's A and B, sometimes it's, it's B and C. Whatever zone though that is separated from the other two, you wanna make it your goal to isolate the enemy team on that one zone. Guys, there's a lot of different maps that I, I can I can bring this up in an example. You know, Burning Shrine is one of them. You've got the one zone outside, the two inside. Obviously, you wanna isolate the enemy team outside. And the greatest way to isolate a team in any situation is by simply not being overly aggressive and pushing into those spots. Simply playing back and defending your control points is always gonna keep them spawning up in that back spawn in that isolated area. Now for something like Countdown, Countdown is about as close as we're gonna get to elimination. Playing your life is extremely important. Simultaneously playing with your team is extremely important. I play as a solo player a bunch, if I see my team moving right, it would not be wise for me to go left and get the arm off. No, just stay with my team going right, commit to wherever they're going, especially if we're not communicating, because even though I like to use team chat, there's a lot of people that won't use team chat. But being present in a gunfight, just being present with your team, playing those objectives is going to go a long way for you. Now, as far as the rest of the objectives, it's all about slaying out. And I, I think it's been confirmed breakthrough is being removed for the time being. So not going to really get up on that. My third tip, your loadout. Now, I'm not going to get into resilience, recovery, look, mobility, all those things. That's just a personal preference, in my opinion. Whatever you want to rock there. No, when I say your loadout, you need to have weapons to swap in at a moment's notice. I see so many guys that are still trying to go with the shotgun hand cannon loadout on a map like Eternity, and they get whooped because they're not using a loadout catering to that map. I'm not saying the whole team should get snipers on, but a scout rifle, maybe at least a pulse rifle. But trying to cross map someone at 60 meters with a Lunas Howl is not a smart choice. I personally like to keep Lunas Howl on me at all times now, and before that, it was always trust. And I like to keep a decently rolled kinetic sniper on me. And again, this could swap up, you know, every now and then I'll put on Borealis and I'll go with something like Dire Promise, or maybe even Midnight Q in that kinetic slot. The main thing is just have loadouts ready that you can swap to on a moment's notice notice to engage in those mid to far range engagements. The fourth tip, I know this is a stupid one. I seem to say it every single time. Boys, use your supers. It's like the most powerful thing you have in your arsenal. I see guys sit on their supers all the time, even at my rank. 
They sit on their supers. We will end the game with supers not being used. That is the most powerful thing you have. Use it. And I can promise you, just about every game type you're in, like the only game type I think that you need to strategically use your super is survival and countdown. And not even survival that much. The, the main thing about survival is you just don't want to go in there and use your super if you're down by like three or more kills. Outside of that, every other game type, use your super. The more kills, the better. It's always about slaying out. Now my fifth tip is something that directly catered to me and I think it's gonna help you a lot. Complete your quest steps way in advance and maybe even as a solo player before you ever hit a thousand rank or more. I made the mistake of getting in with a group, hitting it hard. We jumped up to, I think, somewhere around like 1500 rank. And then I realized, wow, I'm gaining rank very fast, but I'm not getting anywhere on these quest steps because these a-holes on my team are killing people too fast. So I had to get out of there and go into the playlist solo to finish it up. The issue was I was now going against people close to 2000 rank and 2100 rank who now have Luna's How, which became somewhat of a problem with my poor West of Sunfall. It was only until after receiving my trust hand cannon that I really felt comfortable in finishing up these quest steps. With that being said, I think the quest steps themselves would have been much easier to complete had I not gone in there and started hitting the rank so hard. Again, guys, I was still in season three, Regis Claymore mentality. So again, boys, attack those quest steps first, then hit your rank. And for me personally, if you've got a good mind for it, I felt better as a solo player hitting these quest steps up, especially if you get a team that you can isolate a little more and just take advantage of them, you'll run through these quest steps very fast. The last tip here is a tip for everyone. Whether you are a Crucible player or a PVE player, this weapon is very much within your grasp. Like I don't want anyone to feel like this is an isolated thing, that Luna's house only obtainable by the best of the best. Believe me boys, I do not deem the players in this playlist as the best of the best. There's a lot of shitheads up in here. And I don't like playing them any more than you do. But we're only here for one thing and one thing only. And that's for that sexy weapon. And at times, you're going to be a little demoralized. You're going to get down. Maybe you hit a lost streak. That's all right. You'll bounce back again tomorrow. I would personally not just choose a day to say, hey, I'm about to invest, you know, eight to 10 hours. This is my Saturday. I'm going to just kill this playlist. At some point, you know, you will begin to fade a little bit. Your abilities themselves may begin to fade. You might start making a little more mistakes. You might even get impatient. And that's the thing. You cannot get impatient when you're playing any objective game mode because that's when you start to get punished. So at any moment you start to feel like you're getting impatient after you've been playing, especially for an extensive amount of time, go ahead and just get out of the playlist. I would highly recommend just break it up by a day by day basis. Got some time in the evenings to burn. Say to yourselves, hey, I want to just lock down four games every single day. Win or lose, I just want to lock down four. Keep revisiting that every single evening. Fellas, I promise you, you'll get there. Fellas, thank you so much for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.